Hello guys, I believe I'm live now. Um, uh, sorry, I just got a text message. Distracting. Uh, welcome to this Goodreads live stream. So if this is the first time you're seeing one of these Goodreads live streams, what I'm gonna be doing is doing some organizing of my Goodreads shelves. I have kind of like an, a, a really intense shelving system. I have a video all about it, links down in the description box if you're interested or if you have questions. Most of the stuff in that video still holds true. I have changed a few things since I made that video because it's been a little while. But when we left off last time, I was going through uh, my series shelves and that's what we're gonna continue on today. I think we will finish. Hello, Quack Addict. Um, I'm gonna try and like put, uh, I was gonna say tweets, they're not tweets, but little comments that I respond to on the screen. A few people said that was helpful before. Um, so I'm gonna try and do that better than I did last time because I only like half did it last time. Hey, Stardusted Reads, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you guys are doing well on this Thursday. It's almost Friday, it's almost the weekend. Although I know for a lot of people, it doesn't really matter what day of the week it is anymore. Um, I am lucky that I have always worked from home or at least for the last like five, seven years. Uh, so I'm excited that it's about to be the weekend. Hey, Reed Reads, thanks for joining. All right, um, we will get started. I also wanted to start this video out by apologizing for not having a Goodreads live stream last month. I do try to do these monthly, um, but last month with everything going on, I just wasn't really up for it. Uh, I did mention it in one of my reading vlogs, but I know not everybody watches reading vlogs. So if you haven't heard it before, <laughs> I'm sorry that there wasn't one last month, but I'm excited to get back into it this month. Oh, nice, Quack Attic, you work from home too. Yeah, it has definitely come in handy this past couple of months. Okay, so let me pull up my Goodreads. Let's go to my books. In case you're wondering, these are the three books I'm reading right now. Although I'm a lot further in this one. I'm like, I'm, 62%, so I'll go ahead and update that. Hello, Drew, thanks for joining us. I'm doing all right this fine Thursday evening. Um, we are gonna get started with organizing some shelves. So I did check before this live stream um, what we stopped on last time. So we were going through my unfinished series shelf and we had like 16 books left on this shelf. So that's very exciting. We're going to finish um, going through these today. And I, my plan is after that to go to my TBR series shelf, which if you see has 282 series on it. I am pretty sure I'm gonna be doing a lot of culling, either deciding I'm not interested in them or moving them to like, TBR maybe or TBR probably's. Like I only want series that I definitely want to read and that are completed on my TBR series shelf. So that's where we're headed next. But for now, hey Shannon, glad you could join for a little bit or for however long you join. <laughs> um, nice to see a face of someone that I know. So we were at Dark Age before, aha, here we go, Dark Age. So we've got a few more of these to go through. I guess the Red Rising Saga, uh, well, we'll take a look at it in a second. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So the second um, like arc, why is my computer freezing? <laughs> Okay, there it goes. <laughs> the um, the second Red Rising arc, I was considering to be a separate series. I wonder if they're all... Okay, Son of... 
Okay, that's a prequel. The first, which continues in a second trilogy. So it is going to be another trilogy. Hmm. I guess like technically, I don't know why my computer is being so slow. Do I have anything else open that I need to close? Let's see. Come on. Excuse me for a moment. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, uh, someone said the last one isn't out yet. Oh, well, this is confusing. In my mind, I was thinking Dark Age was book four, but it's book five. I actually think that I should just completely take Dark Age off of my TBR shelf or off of my Goodreads shelves. Um, I mean, if it's really just all part of one series, but I also don't want to put uh, the first book, Red Rising, on my unfinished series shelf because I know I can read the first three and like be fine with it. You know what I want to do? Even though these are considered to be one series, I'm going to put this one on my unfinished TBR series shelf. In theory, I might read the first book or the first trilogy and decide I don't want to continue on in the series, but I think that's a problem for future Jade. Aw, Kay Fox, that is really nice of you to say. I'm glad that you enjoy these so much. I was gonna say, I'm glad that you miss me, but that sounded kind of weird. <laughs> I'm glad that you enjoy these live streams so much. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put that there and then I'm actually going to remove dark age from the shelf completely. I like that solution. Okay. Yeah. I, I wish they considered them to be separate series, but I mean, I understand why. <laughs> Shannon said saying that that's a problem for future date is probably how my Goodreads got to where it is. And that is very true. You might not know this guys, but I'm like a hardcore procrastinator. <laughs> if I can put something off, I will. Okay. Stardusted reads. This makes me feel better. Um, that the second trilogy is different and there's a big time jump, which is what I was thinking was that there was a big time jump. So I'm kind of surprised that they like lump them together into one series instead of saying it's a related series, but whatever. Okay. And I have been on like a really big sci-fi kick these days, but uh, I think it's starting to wane a little bit. Like I'm still enjoying sci-fi, but I'm craving more fantasy. Um, whereas like in January, I was definitely craving more sci-fi over fantasy. <clears throat> I have not read any JK Rowling that is not Harry Potter, right? Yeah, you have it. How many of these are there? There's more coming. I honestly don't know if I'm going to read these. Has anybody read these? I I mean, I like mysteries, but I don't, or I don't have a lot of experience. I haven't read a lot of detective stories. I don't really know if I like them or not. I don't know. But it is technically still unfinished. Looks like she comes out with a book every two or three years though. Um, I'm just going to leave it on this unfinished series shelf. And when it's finished one day, maybe I will consider reading it. Shannon said, mystery series are often more like companion books rather than ones that you must read the next book in, by the way. Yeah, that's true. But I'm also very much a sucker for reading in publication order. It's just how I am. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to leave this where it is. Elantris. Um, this is getting moved to my TBR shelf. 
Um, it is technically an unfinished series, but we have no idea when we're getting the next book. And well, I mean, we might have some idea. I'm sure he's he has everything really planned out. Um, but oh, I didn't. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to leave. Oops. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to leave Shannon's comment up there this whole time, but then I accidentally clicked on the next one. Um, I'm glad I'm not the only one who has to read in publication order because it is something that, um, it, I don't know, it just is weird to me to read something out of publication order, even if I know that I can. Like I have a bunch of Karen Slaughter books that are like mid, mid series, but um, I still want to start from the beginning, even if they say that you don't have to. Okay, so we don't really know when we're getting a sequel for this, and I will most likely be reading it before the sequel comes out, but I still want to put it on like my unfinished TBR series. All right, Oana's saying that she's read some of these, hmm. but I might not like it. Okay, so that's good. Queen in Hiding. I'm so curious about the series. This is the series where they're publishing each, it's like a four book series, and they're publishing each one um, a month apart. Actually, it's not even unfinished anymore because I think the last one came out in April. But how cool of an idea is that? They took a four book series, had everything written in like ready to go before they started publishing and then they did one a month like if series were always like that I wouldn't have this not issue but like I wouldn't be so hesitant to start unfinished series if I just knew that they were like going to come out that soon you know so anyways I'm very curious about the series I don't know very many people who have read it I mean they still are fairly new releases oh oh Yeah, sort of serialized, exactly. But the reviews aren't looking so great. Okay, Kayla gave it four stars, but it's still like three and a half. So not like glowing reviews from anybody that I follow. It's still really new. Um, it's technically finished, so I have to either decide if I want to put it on my TBR series shelf or if I want to put it on the probably or maybe shelf. I don't know. Hey, Leanne, thanks for joining. <laughs> Fueled by Fantasy said that this idea of publishing them all like really close together could work really well or not at all, because that's very true. So I think I'm just, because I really haven't heard any like anybody recommending it or saying that it was really good, even though I think the idea is really cool. I'm gonna put it on my maybe shelf for now until I hear more rumblings about it. But I'm very curious about this one. What the heck? Oh, it's a Sean and McGuire book. I was like, this doesn't look like something I would usually pick up, but I'm sure I saw that it was by Shauna McGuire and was immediately interested, which to be honest, I haven't read any Shauna McGuire yet. No, that's not true. I've read um, that one book, the mermaid book that she wrote under another name, Mir Grant. Wait, did she write that under him? I'm so confused right now. Anyways. Um, I'm going to want to double check that. I hate not knowing what I'm talking about. And let's see if this is still unfinished or not. First one came out in 2012. Yes, people are telling me it's Into the Drowning Deep. I just don't remember what author name she wrote it under. I have not actually read Feed, Shannon. Um, I want to, and <laughs> I've been talking about it, but I have not actually read it. It's probably actually not going to show it to me, huh, on this page, because 
she probably did write it under Mira Grant. Yeah, okay, thanks guys. Everyone's confirming she wrote it under Mira Grant. Anyways, back to this. Um, is this stories about a family of cryptozoologists? Sounds very interesting. Hmm, looks like a bunch of novellas, short stories. What is this? Mm. Looks like it's horror. I honestly don't know <laughs> what this is about. Well, it does look to be like it's urban fantasy, which I have to admit is not my favorite genre or subgenre. Mm. Oh, I was trying to see if it was still an unfinished series and I totally forgot that. I'm glad my computer's running a little more smoothly now than it was earlier. Let's see. Oh, something's coming out in 2021. All right, I'm just going to leave this where it is, and then let's go back. Where, here we go. One, two, three, four. So Oana is saying that she never reads reviews before um, starting a book and Kay Fox agrees with her. Um, I often will skim reviews before I read a book. Um, mostly like when I'm first deciding whether or not to read a book, uh, I just want to get an idea of like what other people have thought and if I think it'll be worth my time, let's say, <laughs> based on what people say. Um, but I try not to look while reading the book unless I'm feeling kind of lukewarm about it and I'm like not sure that I like it. Then I like to look at reviews to kind of validate my feelings and be like, okay, I, there's other people who wasn't were annoyed by this same thing that I was annoyed by or whatever. Um, so that is an instance where I would look at reviews while reading, but I usually try not to read them until after I've read the book. <laughs> Drew says that they really wanna read Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. I also would really like to read Middle Game and I have not been making it a priority. Leanne says she will look at ratings of people she trusts. And that's how pretty much I do it too. I'd like to do a quick skim to see what the ratings look like from people that I know. They're like book tastes and stuff. I try not to read too much. <laughs> sometimes the summary gives too much. Yes, sometimes the synopsis is totally gives spoilers and it's annoying. Okay, let's move on. Ooh. Read recommends middle game. <laughs> okay, Blood Countess. That sounds, ooh, a historical YA novel based on a real life Countess Dracula. That sounds good. When did this come out? In January. Oh, so it's definitely an unfinished series if it just came out in January. Has anybody been reading this? Okay, Cece says this is gay, good. Oh, my friend Sana is reading it right now. Four stars, three stars, two read. All right, well, I'm pretty sure this is just gonna stay where it is until I hear more about it, but it sounds very intriguing. Hey Graf, thanks for joining us. I'm glad you're able to make it. Okay, so 
This next one, Rebecca Levine. Okay, this came out in 2014. Looks like I've got the UK cover. Was it only published in the UK? It's kind of weird. They're all hotter than Stoughton, which is a UK publisher. Smiler's Fair. Sounds interesting. Looks like it might be completed actually. Ooh, but did it really come out? It has no ratings. Seven years later. I don't think it's actually come out. Nobody's read it. Hmm. Guess I'll just keep it on the unfinished series list for now. Okay, The Wren Hunt. 2018. <laughs> Fueled by Fantasy said, UK publishers make such nicer covers overall. I, in general, tend to like UK covers better than US ones. Not always, but in general, yes. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that one might not ever come out. The, the release date keeps getting pushed, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. It might be stuck on that shelf. So this does not have release date. It has 72 reviews, that's weird. 2019, so it just came out. I just didn't have a release date on that view. Sometimes that happens and I don't know why. Um, is this a duology? Let me see if the author page gives me any clues. I feel like I've heard of this author before, but I don't know why. I definitely haven't seen any of these other books before. Well, nothing about it being a duology or not. Hmm. I just want to peek at these reviews. And if they say anything about a, another story. This is a very long review. Okay. Hmm. Okay, look. Both books could be standalones if you would understand the history of the characters, or, but you would understand the history of the characters. So maybe there won't be more. Okay, so let's make a decision then. Um, forget this one. I'm gonna probably put it on my maybe shelf because I don't think I've really heard too many people talk about this. Okay, the Nerd Daily likes it. Three. <laughs> Most people have it as to read. All right, for now, wait, what was that question? Is this gonna be a standalone? There's a follow-up companion that should be out in early 2019. It's not from blank perspective, blah, 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 blah. Okay. It's a companion book, so. I'm gonna put this on my maybe shelf. 
I just don't know that much about it. Let, let me uh, look at the synopsis too. Yeah, that sounds like a maybe book. Oh, hey, Rachel. Glad you can join us for a little bit. Okay. Steel Crow Saga. So I actually got to hear this author speak a little bit um, last, was it last weekend or the weekend before? Uh, no, it was just last weekend. Man, that feels like ages ago. But I don't know if any of you guys caught the um, social distancing book fest, but this was one of the authors who was on some of the panels and he was hilarious. I thought he was really funny. And I got so much more interested in his books um, although I'm confused because it's called a saga, so that implies there's going to be more books, right? But it's not like showing on Goodreads as being part of a series. And I mean, he's not self-published, so I would have like expected there to be a second book announced. So I don't know. I think a lot of people have liked it though. Ooh, Asian inspired fantasy with intricate characters. Also, it actually closed up like a standalone, which I found refreshing. Hmm, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shannon, I saw you in some of the chats, but I'm glad that you had fun with it. I definitely added a few things to my TBR. Um, and I even requested a few books off of NetGalley based on it. <laughs> Pierre gave it five stars. I didn't realize that was her Goodreads profile picture though. I wouldn't have recognized her. Oh, see, someone else added it to their TBR based on social distancing festival. Mm, I just wish I knew for sure if there was going to be more books or not, but it does make me feel better that someone said it read like a standalone. Pierce Brown tweeted about this book. Mm -mm. Many reviews are saying this story is Pokemon meets Avatar The Last Airbender. And as I read this, I could kind of see where they got that idea. But I don't really think the similarities are strong enough to pitch the story as such. Okay, that's good to know. I don't know that these people. I've scrolled down far enough that I'm reading strangers' reviews. No, I don't know what to do. Because I think there's probably going to be more. But it hasn't been announced. So I think I'm going to put this on my probably shelf and then... If more books get announced, maybe I'll move it. But I also want to mark it as, well, we'll mark it as fantasy. Um, but I want to mark it as mostly five stars. I'm kind of, I mean, 1800 ratings isn't like as much as, you know, other books, um, some other books. But that's a decent amount of ratings to have all five stars. Like that's a lot of five stars. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on my probably shelf. Oh, Graf is telling me that Smiler's Fair, it looks like they rescheduled the final book for October 2020 based on what he's seeing on Amazon. So that's good to know. Okay. I really do like this cover. <laughs> I haven't heard of this author before though, Brian D. Anderson. Sounds like he has other popular series. Oh, that's an interesting way to spell Mariah, <laughs> a fantasy way to spell Mariah. Uh, you guys probably don't know, but I have a younger sister named Mariah, uh, spelled without the Y. <laughs> Mm. 
The two must leave their home behind, and in doing so will face sorcerers and thieves, con men and assassins, treachery and greed. That sounds really cool. <laughs> Is anybody oh no <laughs> my friend christy gave it two stars but she and i definitely don't always have the same taste in books so take that with a grain of salt strong debut mm, it's a cliffhanger but one that felt unfinished, definitely not my favorite thing. <laughs> Killed by Fantasy, whose name is Rachel, she said earlier. I'll try to remember that. Um, she said she would have pronounced it Maria, not Mariah. I don't know, maybe I jumped to Mariah because it looks like my sister's name, but with a Y in the middle. Oh, this is really interesting. What is the content rating and or recommendation or recommended reading age? The age range is broad in the early stages. Tor and I had a long talk and decided to fade to black the sex. Though there is none in book one. Sorry, I just think this is fascinating, like what sort of conversations he had with um, his publisher. This isn't a question I would normally spend so much time answering, but there seems to be some confusion as to if the Bard's Blade is YA. It's not, though I feel that lately anything that's not grim dark is looked upon as YA. Uh, I feel you, dude. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy grim dark very much, but not. Everything falling outside that category is meant for kids. Agreed. If you are screening for a younger child, I would recommend reading. Wait, if you are screening for a younger child, you would recommend reading it? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, I'm sorry, Rachel said that she's heard of this author before from Holly Hart's books, but that it uh, or, but that it might have been a different series. And it sounds like he has a couple like other series that might be indie published. And this one's being um, published by Tor. Oh, <laughs> interesting title choice, sort of truth. <laughs> I don't know, I can't hear that title without thinking Carrie, Terry Goodkind. Yeah, I haven't heard of these. Anyways, I have seen this one kind of going around a little bit. Um, it's an unfinished series. I'm just gonna leave it here. Expect a publication and it looks like it's gonna be a trilogy. So we're all good leaving that where it is. So let's open these two and then I think I should refresh this page because I've moved a few things off. I feel like if I go to the next page, I'm gonna have like a chunk that I'm missing. So if I refresh and then Kings of Paradise, this one. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I forget to take the comment off the screen after I'm done talking about it. <laughs> okay. Oh, I like that cover. It's a dual author book. In a world where the flight list are ruled by those who can fly. That sounds interesting. Well, I wonder if they're sisters. Or maybe they're married. <laughs> I shouldn't just assume they're sisters. Oh, coresisters.com. Okay, my first assumption was correct. Okay, so they have a previous series that doesn't have a ton of ratings. Okay, 
let's go back to this book. See, this just came out, which means it's probably just gonna stay on this shelf. Oh, that's promising. The first two people gave it four and five stars, but not a lot of people have read it. Does this book have love subplot? Yes. Hmm, engaging story of royalty, betrayal, and secrets. Oh, it's inspired by Swan Lake. I used to love watching the Swan Lake animated film when I was a kid. Yeah, right, this cover, it's really pretty. <laughs> Oana, I have not been seeing those comments, but I highly doubt it's the Terry Goodkind. But that'd be really funny if it was. He better not go looking too much on booktube. He might find some things that he's not happy to see. Okay, so... Anybody familiar with this award? Erda? I don't know that award. 99% liked it on Goodreads. How did they figure that out? It's not like there's a like button. Ooh, this is on Kindle Unlimited. Which means, I mean, I know it might change by the time I get around to reading this book, but, oh, it looks like I've already taken care of that. Okay, first book came out in 2017, so. Third book is coming out this year. Cool. Um... I guess the question is, do I definitely want to read it or not? Which I kind of think, I don't know. Oh, I bet this is where I heard of it, it was from Kitty G. Okay. She recommends the audio. I think I already marked that down, huh? Yeah. Oh, it was one of Kitty G's favorite books from last year. Probably where I heard about it from. It was one of her favorite books, but she gave it four stars. Maybe she doesn't give a lot of five stars. Oh, another trick that I have, I mean, it's not really a trick, but um, when I am reading reviews, if it's like multiple paragraphs, a lot of times I'll read the beginning and I read the end and kind of like skim the middle because I don't want too much information, but usually, you know, beginning and ends, you kind of get an idea of what people think of it overall. Okay, um, what do I want to do? I think I just want to leave it here. Although, let me look at the plot real quick. If I ever do like a, a month of Kindle Unlimited, which I think I might one day. Oh, this is interesting. They put little quotes from reviews from Goodreads. <laughs> I love that this person called the author Mr. Nell. What's the Richard Nell? <laughs> one of my pet peeves, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because I, I have friends that do this, but one of my bookish pet peeves is when people, when they're reviewing a book or talking about it in a video, they use the author's first name as if they're on a first name basis with the author. It drives me nuts. I, it's not a big deal. And I will never like not be someone's friend who does this or whatever. But I just always use the author's full name. I just feel so weird being like, if I was talking about Brandon Sanders and be like, yeah, Brandon did a really good job with this part of the story. And I like Brandon's writing here. Like, that's just weird to me. So I always say the author's full name. But it's cracking me up that this person <laughs> said Mr. Nell. <laughs> First installment of an epic low fantasy trilogy.
Okay, it's not like low fantasy, like it takes place in our world. It's low fantasy, like there's not a lot of magic. Okay. I'm very intrigued. Um... <laughs> Shannon, I would tease you if you did that, but I would also know you were doing it just because I said something <laughs> about it. I mean, a lot of people do it. A lot of people do it. And if you haven't noticed it before, you're going to start noticing it now. Like when you watch booktubers, a lot of people do it. And I just don't know why that became a thing. <laughs> okay, I'm just leaving this on the shelf because I, I don't know. I think I want to read it. Number one bestseller in Canadian dark fantasy. Like, sounds pretty cool. Okay. Symphony of the Wind. I wouldn't be surprised if like a bunch of these are ones that I heard about from um, the SPFBO videos that Kitty G was doing. Which means that they're probably all unfinished series. Oh, this one has a second book out, but is it? Hmm. If I had to guess, I would say it's going to be more than just these two books. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the second book in the Raincatcher's Ballad epic fantasy series. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it here. Man, I thought these 16 books would go by a lot faster than they are because I'm pretty sure they're mostly just going to stay on the shelf. <laughs> But I've been like really like digging into them. <laughs> oh, I don't think I've ever heard someone refer to an author like on booktube as Mr. or Mrs. last name. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it probably is regional. Stardusted Reed says that they're most likely to do la more, more likely to do last name. Yeah, I feel like last name makes more sense than just first name. I just do both, but yeah. Okay. Let me just start by checking the status of the series. Um, it's a short story. Is it going to only be two books? Does this have a release date? Book two. Looks like it's out. Looking forward to book three. All right. Ooh, what? There's zombies. Did I see that this is a zombie series? This just says fantasy adventure. I swear this says zombies. Excuse me. Oh, just by one. One user did all of these. Okay. Hmm. Oh, so Caitlin said that she thought it was going to be more horror than fantasy, but actually I would say this falls thoroughly in the realm of high fantasy with lots of magic and a lot of crazy star children were roaming the world. Coming of age story. I love coming of age stories. Definitely if you like the idea of big mecha magical suits and powers you've never dreamed of, then this book is well worth the read. But is it still creepy? Because that makes me want to read it. She doesn't say that it's creepy. Okay. Mm. 
I'm gonna put it on my maybe shelf because I think it might be done, but I don't really know. Um, and let me look at these. Oh man, that's pretty close to being mostly five stars, but not quite. But I think this is a, um, I thought it was in Kindle Unlimited, but it's not. At least not in this view. Let's let's switch to this edition and see if it's different. I don't think it is. Oh, it is. <laughs> I was wrong. Okay, so it is on Kindle Unlimited. So I want to add it to that. Because I do want to do a month or two at some point of Kindle Unlimited and just try and read a bunch of the stuff that is on there that I'm interested in. Hold on, I have a, a dog who is who needs to go to the bathroom. Just a sec. You gonna go potty? You gonna go outside? Chloe, come on. Hey, babe. Never mind. Okay. I apologize about that. All right, I think we're done with this one. Ooh, this one looks really creepy. The world is dying. Fantasy, dark fantasy. Okay. Also Kindle Unlimited. I bet this is another SPFBO. Yeah. Even slightly borders on the horror category. I like the sound of that. But how much of a series is it? Okay, so is it a series? Hmm. Yeah, there are actually a lot of fantasy books that are on Kindle Unlimited. They're not all good though. <laughs> so you kind of have to like wait. I mean, same with any other genre. Actually, there's also a lot of horror books that are on <clears throat> Kindle Unlimited too. And But I mean, some of them are good. You just gotta find them. I just wanna see if she's gonna, if she has like a question answer thing about how many books this is gonna be. Doesn't look like it. I'm gonna leave it on my unfinished series shelf because if it's like listed as a series and there's only one book out, I feel like that means there's gonna be more. But I do wanna make sure I have it on my Kindle Unlimited shelf. I think I do, yep. Cool, so this can stay where it is. This edition is out of print. Um, like, is it going to take me to a whole nother book? Okay, good. Never mind. <sighs> okay. So this came out originally in 2015. Looks like this is a fantasy with a lot of romance, a male-male romance. Oh, Kitty G really liked it. Okay, some good reviews there. Twenty seventeen, twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen. Why is this on my unfinished series shelf? I feel like I had to have added this not that long ago, but it's clearly finished. Well, I guess I don't know how many books are going to be in the series. Yeah, I first shelved it in January. I feel like maybe I saw this on someone's... Um, on someone's best of the year or something. Hmm. 
whoa, but look at these ratings. Out of 8,000, like, that's a lot. I'm really impressed. But is it finished <laughs> is the question. <laughs> yeah, Rachel said that she can tell that I was watching Kitty G that week. I think I was watching her like best of or catching up on her SBFBO stuff or something. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to try checking the author's page to see if it says anything about how many books this series is supposed to be. Oh, this is vaguely familiar. And I put that, I left that on my unfinished series shelf. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, nothing about how many books are in the series. Well, since everything, um, oh, did you guys see that? You put genre as gay and lesbian. <laughs> I love that, that's hilarious. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna put this on my uh, TBR, probably. Mm. Honestly, it probably belongs on my maybe shelf, but the fact that it has so many five-star ratings has gotten me like super intrigued. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna put it on my TBR series shelf. I don't think I'll get to it anytime soon. And after we finish these unfinished series shelf, I have to go through those and kind of cull them. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna just assume that it's finished, even though I don't really know. Okay. Moon Deeds. Uh, yeah, someone on his author page was talking about that, but I don't know that book. Um, let me just open a new Goodreads window. I just want to make sure it's on my Goodreads. Okay. Stardust at Reads says that she liked it. All right, let's see. The House in the Cerulean Sea. Oh, oh, this is familiar. I've seen people talking about this recently. Well, that's cool. So I, I love when authors start out being like self-published and then get to publish with publishers. This also has a ton of five-star reviews. Granted, it's newer. It just came out in March. Oh, I totally thought this was a middle grade, <laughs> just like based on the cover. It is not a middle grade. An enchanting story. I like that description. Oh, and realizing that I, okay, I really like this little paragraph. So I do the same thing with synopses too. I will often read the beginning and the end of the synopsis and not the middle. <laughs> I mean, according to this Goodreads page, it's not, <laughs> um, but I don't know, it could be wrong. No, it does say young adult. Oops, I didn't mean to <laughs> redo that. Um, it does say young adult though. So maybe it is on the younger side. I don't know. <laughs> Mike said he has a dog in his author photo, which is always a good sign. And I would have to agree with that. 
Riley gave it five stars. With whimsy and enchantment, if you, oh, that makes me happy. Oh, this person said that this book changed their life. Adriana gave it five stars. This is exciting. Um, it says fantasy. Fantasy. Oh, <laughs> Stardust and Reed says it's an adult book. The main character is at least 40. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely saw that it was shelved as an adult. And then later I saw that it was young adult. Okay, so this is obviously now released. I am terrible about cleaning off my not yet released shelf. I usually will do them like before I do my next anticipated releases video. <laughs> so they usually sit on there for about three months after they've come after they've come out. Um, okay, so what do I want to do? I this book has now been released. I'm gonna put it on my probably shelf. I'm also gonna mark it as mostly five stars. Okay, that was a bit of a tangent. <laughs> Back to this book. Um, it's only 99 cents on Amazon right now. The best defense against technology is magic. That's intriguing. Mm, it's a space opera. An addictive space opera science fantasy series. How interesting. Oh, another SPFBO. Oops, I forgot that I left that on the screen. Oh, hi, Alex. Thanks for joining us. Wow, it's already 9 o'clock. Um, just as a heads up, I'm probably going to be doing this for another 30 minutes, and then I'll call it night. Three and a half stars. Okay, but how many books is this going to be? Okay, it's called The Saga. There's only one book. I think I'll just leave it here for now. So is it going to be a four book series? I'm confused. Hmm, that's a short story. Also a short story. Oh, okay. Those weren't labeled as books. Okay. Seems like this might be completed. Afro futurist space adventure on Earth fans. Okay. Um, okay, going back to the first book. Fans of dystopian sci-fi, fans of strong female characters. I like that. Wait, am I not friends with Njiri? <laughs> Add friend. Okay. So it does look like it's a completed series, but I don't know if I want to read it or not. So I'm going to put it on my maybe shelf, but I'm also going to mark it as mostly five stars. Um, I've been marking things as mostly five stars, uh, just like as a, like a visual cue for me, but I've been thinking about maybe doing a video with them, like maybe picking, a few books off of it. I don't know. 
either ones that like have the most ratings or the highest ratings, but just like maybe picking out books that are on that have mostly five stars and then seeing if I really like them or not. I don't know. It's it's an idea that's percolating. Okay, let's leave that the way it is. I've heard really good things about the Library of the Unwritten. Hmm. Second installment makes it sound like there's going to be more. Yeah, kind of like a five-star predictions, like, but with a twist because they're not... They're not ones that I would like really put on an actual five star prediction, but that other people have really liked. It's it's a similar idea. I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> I'm trying to clarify. I don't know if that was any more clear. In the first book of a new fantasy series. Yeah, Riley's the one who I heard talking about it. My BB, who is she calling that? Wait, what is this? Oh, Lady Gaga book. Sorry, <laughs> that's really funny. Beautiful prose with a sprinkle of banter. Oh yeah, I remember Justine talking about this. Oh my gosh. See, lots of really good reviews. Oh, my friend Mariah really liked it too. Oh, this is her BB. Hmm. I don't think I know her. Anyways. Um, is this, okay, I'm putting this on my TBR series shelf though, even though it's unfinished. Well, I'm gonna put it on my TBR series unfinished shelf. Um, even though it's unfinished, I like have heard good enough things about it that I'm very interested. So we'll go ahead and put it on the shelf. Hmm. I feel like someone was recommending this series to me recently. Sorry, I heard a noise outside. Has anybody read this series? I feel like this has been around for a long time. Maybe not, 2015. Twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen. Two books a year, goodness. Oh yeah. There's still wait. One through two and five. And then three and four and six in a book. They went up to seven. I think these are like kind of like companion books, not. Oh, and some of these are novellas. The sequel novella. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to put it on my TBR maybe shelf. I think it's probably a completed series. Oh, okay, so, oops, Shannon also wants to read these. Maybe I'll let you take a first stab at them and let me know what you think. Um, she doesn't think that they're finished though and that they are all novellas. I didn't realize they were all novellas. But if it's not finished, I'll put it back on my TBR unfinished. Um, where's the, oh yeah, this one's a novella too. So that's probably why they publish the ones that are together. All right, cool. Well, after you read it later this year, Shannon, you'll have to tell me what you think. Um, I, I guess, I don't know. I'll put it back. <laughs> to be determined if this is a finished series. Sounds like maybe it's not. Okay. And then I have this and this. I'll, I also want to go back 
to make sure I didn't skip over any. I feel like I did. Hmm, maybe not. I looked at these. Wait, these are in a different order. I don't remember looking at this one. Maybe this is just the one that I missed. Pretty sure it needs to stay here though. Hmm, I didn't know Chan had read this. Imagine if Bella didn't suck and had chosen the werewolves and was also gay. <laughs> that sounds really good. <laughs> Although I will put out there that I uh, was an Edward shipper, so. <laughs> Poor Chelsea, I feel like this happens to her, not a lot, but I, this is not the first time I've seen her have a DNF of a book that like other people have really liked. Interesting. Twenty twenty. All right, I'm just gonna leave this where it is. And I just realized this was my main page. Okay. Two more of these. I did not think <laughs> going through these unfinished series was going to take this long. Okay, The Merciful Crow. This just came out recently. I'm wrong. It came out last summer. Uh, but I really haven't heard that much about it. Okay. We got a two stars. As a pansexual character. That's cool. Hmm. There's a cat named Barf. Okay. DNF, DNF. Hmm. Delaney gave it four stars. There's a very, very different magic system involving bones and teeth. That sounds interesting. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, oh, what's the name of that series? The Daughter of Smoke and Bone series, the teeth part. All right, seems like I, there's a lot of like middle of the road reviews, which doesn't make me particularly want to read it. Expected publication. All right, it's just gonna stay on my unfinished series shelf. <laughs> Shannon was excited about this. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about this. I really don't read middle grade as much as I want to. <laughs> Shannon loved it. Go check out her review, guys. <laughs> Man, a lot of people really liked it. I just never pick up fan or middle grades. Sequel's coming out soon. Oh, that's cute. They're gonna break the universe and then they're gonna fix it. <clears throat> it's fantasy. Aww. Okay. I think I'm gonna put it on my TBR series unfinished shelf. I don't know. I feel like eventually this might end up on my maybe shelf, not because I'm not interested, but only because I rarely pick up middle grades. And I feel like when I do pick up a middle grade, like the, the few that I have on the top of my list of middle grades I wanna read are all like high fantasy. And I feel like I'd pick those over this, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this TBR series unfinished shelf. <laughs> so much TJ Clue in this stream. There was only two books, and it was because I discovered them at the same time. <laughs> Shannon said that Sal and Gabby is so, so good, such as her husband, um, and he really liked it too. 
Yeah, like the Fable Haven series. That's like one of the fantasies um, middle grades that I really want to get to. Um, yeah, I don't know when that's going to happen. I have like book five or something in my possession, but obviously I need to read the beginning of the series and the libraries are closed right now. And well, there's a few other middle grades that I'm also interested in that are fantasy too. <laughs> Shannon knows me too well. She said, maybe she'll give it to me for Christmas so that it's on my physical shelf and then I might end up picking it up sooner. It's true, if it's on my physical shelf, I might prioritize it more. <laughs> but no pressure to get it for me for Christmas at all. Okay. So I do believe that my TBR unfinished, I can't even talk, my unfinished series shelf is now completely cleaned up. I think I got it down to 100 books maybe, 102. Oh, <laughs> you're right. There were three, not two. But I did discover the two fantasies at the same time. Um, I had no idea. I have seen The House in the Cerulean Sea going around, and I did not realize that was the same author. So that was good. Yes, those are more middle grades that I am interested in reading. The And also, um, B.E. Swab has some horror middle grade that I'm interested in too. I haven't read any Catherine Arden. I feel like I really need to. I feel like I will like her stuff, I think. Okay. Mm. We don't have much time left, but I do wanna go ahead and peek at my TBR series shelf. Let's see what kind of a mess this is. Oh, okay. So it's going to be interesting to figure out which of these are series I like 100% want to read. Because in the past, I have used this shelf for any series, no matter <clears throat> how interested I was in it. As long as it was completed, I put it on the shelf. And now I've kind of like changed how I'm doing that. And if it's something that I think is more appropriate for like probably or maybe, I'm putting it on those shelves, even though it's not. A standalone. So I just want to peek and see what we've got coming up next month to look forward to. I can see that a lot of these are like maybes and probablys and not as many of them are 100% I definitely want to read. So that's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Well, I mean, I'm gonna have a lot of fun and like your mileage may vary if you will have fun watching me. Um, <laughs> call some of these and move some of these to like my maybe and probably shelves. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, Shannon thinks I would like the bear in the night guild. I think so too, from what I've heard of it. The Shadow Shaper series is completed. The last book came out in January. Where did you see that? Was it on my unfinished shelf? Shadow Shaper. That's the Daniel Jose older books, right? Yeah. Good eye, good eye. Oh, man, I can't believe how long these books have been out. I feel like they just came out the other day. Like, I mean, not the other day, but I feel like the first, like I remember the first one coming out, but I must have heard about it after it first came out because 2015, that was a long time ago. But yeah, it looks like the last one just came out. Have you read it, um, Stardusted Reads? I'm interested in it, but I do believe it is urban fantasy, which as I've mentioned, is not always my favorite thing. Welcome to getting older. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Time goes by so fast, especially after having like been on book two first or like the book turnet really. Um, since I didn't start my YouTube channel till a year after I'd kind of already been involved online. Um, but yeah, it's been like almost five years or it'll be five years on book two in the fall in October. 
So it's just really strange, like seeing books that I remember seeing the hype around when they were first coming out and everything and being like, wow, that was like five years ago. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> okay. So I need to move this. Um, so that I need to decide, is this a probably or like a 100% yes? A weird zombie guy. Okay. I think to be honest, I'm gonna put this on my maybe shelf, mostly because it's urban fantasy, but I am very interested in it. Hmm. Solid YA urban fantasy. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it on my maybe shelf. Let's give it a genre. Yeah. Okay, so Stardust Reed says that she hasn't read it yet. And Shannon said that it might be a little political. Yeah. I don't, I don't totally mind things being a little political, but especially if they have like magic in them, <laughs> like fantasy elements, uh, but definitely not my favorite thing to do. Okay, so uh, that's what you guys have to look forward to next month <laughs> is I'm gonna be going through this um, TBR series shelf that has so many books on it right now. It has over 200 and it's definitely going to be called down um, to hopefully less than a hundred. I don't know. Look, this is so interesting. I already have 53 books uh, that are series that are unfinished, but that I already know that I want to read. So I don't know if I'm able to get this one down that much. We'll see. Like I, when I made the shelf, this TBR series unfinished, I thought there'd be like 20 books on it, like at the most. I did not think there was gonna be 53. I just, there's so many series that I wanna read, so many books that I wanna read, period, but especially series. The thing is, is with a lot of these series, and I need to keep reminding myself of this, is there's gonna be a lot of them that I read the first book and I either DNF the first book or I decide to DNF the series and not continue on. So even though it seems daunting to have, I mean, it is daunting to have so many series that I want to read, but I have to remind myself that I'm not actually going to read the entire series for all of these series that I'm interested in. So that helps. <laughs> Rachel is looking forward to our, my next uh, live stream. She loves a good calling and yes, booktuber problems or really just anybody who reads a lot because there's plenty of people out there who read a lot who aren't necessarily booktubers but yes I'm in agreement of with that what are words it's late on a Thursday night all right guys well thanks for hanging out with me and like I said well, I'll be doing this again in a month I try to do them every month <laughs> yeah <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> yes, book of reader problems. Agreed, agreed. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me and I will see you guys next time. Bye.